Good evening from the Canadian Orthodox Monastery of All Saints of North America. And uh, we are going to uh, video again on my desk because I want to read a few things. Uh, tonight we'll go back to the uh, discussion of the toll houses. Uh, and as I think we, we traced the bridge from India to Egypt and discussed why uh, ascetic writings, uh, we're not talking again about the uh, wisdom of the fathers, the Philokalia and that sort of thing, but the development of a, a, a unique ascetic theology as opposed to the, what, the theological theology of the church. Uh, when somebody mentions ascetic theology, they're almost talking, of, always talking about a form of Gnosticism or something with a Gnostic influence in it. And I'll explain that as we go a little bit more completely. But anyway, we did return to Egypt, and uh, we'll go back to the discussion of this bridge between uh, the East and uh, Egypt a little later. And one reason that I bring that up as a preface this evening is simply because I've gotten some letters from people who said that after reading the uh, Toll House Schemata, they realized how much it reminded them of the Tibetan Book of the Dead and some other uh, Buddhist and Hindu writings. Uh, well, of course, it's true. It does, in many ways, resemble the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Uh, I think it's closer to the uh, uh, pagan Egyptian Book of the Dead. And I think a great deal of it was really ultimately taken from the Egyptian Book of the Dead. But a lot of the concepts are rather universal in... Um, all Gnosticism, and uh, also, and of course Manichaeism, being the, the largest of the Gnostic movements, was very much involved in India. Uh, Mani himself had been in India and studied Buddhism, Hinduism, Jainism, and a lot of his ideas, of course, were transmitted into the Egyptian desert and are found sometimes among some of the uh, spurious writings in, in Egypt. But one thing that is classic, the sine qua non, of Toll House Gnosticism is the role of the devil and his demons. And this is something that's very profound in uh, Gnostic theology. We don't find this kind of power among the demons in Orthodox Christian demonology. And we're going to discuss that a little because we've, together with um, four or five other colleagues, done a careful study of the latter divine ascent, the lives, sayings of the Paradise of the Fathers, the rule of St. Benedict, the conferences of St. John Cassian, um, the, the uh, Philokalia, and all these, and we do not find any advocacy of the Toll House theory. Now, one other thing that's very telling, and that is the fact that in not one of the local councils nor in any of the ecumenical councils, nor in any of the divine services for the commemoration of the dead or for the funeral. In not one of them is there a vaguest hint or mention of the aerial toll houses or the demons snatching souls out of the air and dragging them off anywhere. We'll find occasionally some kind of a mention of it in some of the ascetic writings where we might expect to find Gnostic influences. And, uh, but Stop and think for a moment that in not one council of the church where they discussed these matters, in more than one, not one of them is there any such mention of the aerial toll houses. And I, we've caught toll house cult members adding reference to the toll house in prayers where they never existed before. During uh, Bright Week, I got an email from a Greek priest in Australia, and he said he was using the um, Triodion published by Jordanville. And he was shocked to come across in one troparium a mention of aerial toll houses because this, he'd been serving the same service in Greek for years, and he'd never heard this mention. So he went back to the original Greek, and it was not there. So it was probably added in to the translation dishonestly, disreputably, 
by whoever translated or provided the translation of these divine services at Jordanville. It was done then uh, deceitfully and dishonestly because it does not occur in the original Greek. And uh, we'll have to check it out now in the original church Slavonic and see if it was there. But it wouldn't be the first time that members of the Toll House cult had surreptitiously and deceitfully added Toll House mentions where they did not exist before. There's even been the assertion that the Toll Houses were mentioned by St. John Damascene and the Octoikos. That's an absolute lie. It's not just false, it's a lie because St. John Damascus makes no such mention anywhere in the Octoikos. Uh, St. John Damascus wrote the Octoikos for the Vespers Matins and uh, of, of the Resurrection for Saturday night, Sunday morning. He did not write anything of the Octoikos for weekdays. And so it's simply a malicious lie to say that John uh, Damascene mentions the aerial toll houses in the in the uh, Octoikos. Uh, now, we're going to look a little more at the Church Fathers at this time. And uh, I'm going to start with the Council of Constantinople of 1672, and uh, where we also have the confessions of, of the Patriarch of Constantinople. The Council of Constantinople in 1672 declares that we believe that the souls of the departed are either in repose or torment as each one has wrought. For immediately after the separation from the body, they are pronounced either in bliss or suffering and sorrow. Immediately after the separation from the body, they are pronounced either in bliss or suffering and sorrow. Yet we confess that neither the joy nor the condemnation are yet complete. After the general resurrection, when the soul and the body are reunited, each one will receive the full measure of joy or condemnation due to him for the way in which he conducted himself, whether well or ill. Now, no council has ever said otherwise. So, if this aerial toll house doctrine were something accepted by the Orthodox Church or crucial to the faith, it most certainly would have been enunciated in the canons in the councils of the church. Its absence proclaims it not a doctrine of the church. Its absence from the divine services for the Padikitas, for the memorial services, and from the funeral testify loudly and clearly that it is not a doctrine of the Orthodox Church. So all of the vain efforts to insinuate it into the church are really shameful and sinful. We read in Wisdoms, Wisdom 3.1, The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God, and there no torment shall touch them. And let's take a look at a few verses of Scripture before we read a little more from the Holy Fathers. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. John 12.31 but Christ is telling us that the prince of this world is deprived of his power and cast out by him. In the next verse, of course, it tells about his crucifixion. And Ephesians 4.27 tells us, Neither give place to the devil. And again he says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And James tells us in James 4, 7, Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. We uh, seem to be running out of time at this moment, so we'll, we'll follow with a, 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 and immediately with another video, because I want to read from St. Hippolytus of Rome and uh, one or two other fathers. At this time, we'll go on with a whole string of, of quotations from the fathers later.